I'm quite excited to get into today's episode because it features some really beautiful autumn landscape photography. But first, I've got an announcement to make. I've just launched my best print collection of all time, and it's called Panogasms. All of the panorama prints from Panogasms are on sale right now with 40% off but only for seven days. These prints make the perfect Christmas gift with guaranteed delivery before Christmas. Yeah, so I'm quite excited about that. And there's a link to my website in the description below. What are you getting me for Christmas this year? Well, I was going to give you one of these prints. Oh. Well, what are you getting for me? I was going to get you a treadmill. The f treadmill? And one of those benches to do sit-ups on. Anyway, if you want to help support this channel and get yourself a lovely Christmas gift, there's a link to my website in the description below. You can order any one of these beautiful pano prints and hopefully you won't be as disappointed as Amanda with her Christmas gift. Right, let's get on with the rest of this episode. I think you're going to enjoy this. a canyon deep in the darkest forests of Nova Scotia that for two weeks of the year is blanketed in a carpet of pure gold. So we're out in the forest. It's the very, very thick of autumn right now here in Cape Breton. And basically we're, we're out just scouting locations for next year's workshops and trying to get as many gorgeous fall shots as we can. But look at this business. We're joined today by Simon Detramont, taking a break from doing wildlife, and he's going to join us for some fall colours. Now, do you like gnarly trees? Gnarly justness? Right, well, I'm going to show you some trees that are gnarlius maximus, oh. and with the added bonus, I hope, of spectacular fall colours. If you're enjoying this video, please show some support and hit that subscribe button and don't forget to tickle my bell. So this is that beautiful gnarly tree that I shot a few videos ago and in real time, it's probably about three or four months ago that I actually shot that before and back then it was green canopy lighting up the background. Well obviously today I was hoping for yellow canopy and it's kind of yellow, you know, there's some lovely light going on in the background there. But this, this, cat, this is basically a deep, deep ravine or a canyon. So it just doesn't get that direct light, which is fine. I want that. I want that soft light, but it's still pretty, pretty beautiful. I don't think I'm going to get the shot that I was after. So I'm going to head to the top of the trail and try and get a waterfall shot. Hopefully better than the last time I came up here because of the fall colors. We'll see. It does look very different. In a few minutes, I'd found my first composition. So I put on my warm jacket and stood in the wet stuff right up to my delicate ankles. Okay, so let me show you this shot. I love all of the elements that are in this shot because you've got a nice combination of color in the top third, and then you've got this tumble down waterfall here. And whenever you see this, whenever you see these, these bubbles going around in a little vortex, that's when you know you can get some of those long exposure spiral shots. So I've got everything. I've got lovely background and a lovely foreground and an interesting middle ground with that, uh, that bridge there. Oh, and there's a cute dog. <laughs> there's a cute dog just showed up. So what I'm going for with this shot, I'm, I'm trying to get this in one exposure, but I will do a bunch of F22 shots that are really long exposures just to get as much motion blur as I can in those vortexing bubbles, if there is such a word as vortexing. But I love this, this texture. I reckon a, a quarter of a second to one sixth of a second will be just about perfect for this tumble of water. And I'm going to shoot at, I think, F11, and I'll play with the ISO just to get the perfect shutter speed. And because I'm at F11 and because the foreground, this, this is the closest thing you can see to me, it's about 12 feet away. 
so I don't need to focus stack that. I can get this all without stacking, which I love. Focus stacking, to be quite honest with you, is a pain in the ass. So whenever I can compose a shot that doesn't need it, I'm happy with that. Now, I wish there was a bit of light coming in on that background there, but I'll take what I can get. It's really nice and soft and very, very manageable when it's soft light like this. So there you go, dead simple. If it turns out to be any good, here's the shot. was a pretty good start to the day, but we had bigger fish to fry, so we got back in the camper and moved on to the next location. Now did I mention that I'm having a print sale? I think I did, but just in case I forgot, it's only on for seven days. There's a link in the description. After that last shoot, we were only about two hours away from Egypt Falls, which is where we are now, which you might remember from a couple of videos back. And I just wanted to really get here before the fall colours disappeared. And I reckon today might actually be perfect timing. Not that this happens very often, but the reality turned out to be better than my expectations. So I framed up a really simple, intimate shot. It doesn't really feature that much fall color, but it's really nice. So I'll show you what I mean on the back of the camera. Well, not the back of the camera. I'm gonna show you what I'm actually looking at in the video. So maybe you can see my blurred finger here. But basically what I've got is this sort of bottom, I would say bottom third of the frame. Oh, this finger's way, way blurry. Is devoted to the shoreline of the the river here with this cool tree that's kind of twisting towards the waterfall and then obviously the background is just filled by that cascade that's it dead simple just two elements a cascade and then that shoreline with that cool little log in front of it and a bunch of rocks that's it really really simple i, I wished i could have had some fall color now what i've got if you just look in the top left of the frame and follow my very blurry finger, you'll see this, this tree here, well, these tree branches creeping in from the top left. And there's just a few leaves left on that tree. This would have been so much better if I'd come here a few days ago and there'd been a few more yellow leaves left on it. But you know, you live and learn. Maybe next year I'll come back and redo this. But other than that, I think it's a really nice composition. So I'm going to try a few more other shots where it's just really tight vignettes of little sections of the waterfall and see how those turn out. But if this one turns out to be any good, here's a shot. zoomed in quite a lot tighter what you're looking at here is I'm at I'm still only at 135 so I've not zoomed in that much but I've just eliminated everything except for just the cascade I don't know why I'm <laughs> waving my blurry finger you, you just can't see anything can you so I just simplified the composition so what this shot is all about for me now is that beautiful cascade but also those very few orange leaves that are just kind of stuck to that cliff. They're just not refusing to budge. Then they're just stuck there, sort of in defiance of the cascade. 
I'm sure if there was more rain and a heavier cascade, they would just be gone. But I just love how they're just, they're just clinging on for dear life. And I just like that little splash of color against what's really almost a sort of monochrome image. This would make a, a pretty good black and white, actually. But because of that, that little element of color with the leaves, I'm not gonna turn it black and white. But if this one turns out to be any good, here's this shot. And I've got some fairly good shots today. You, you, you get any good shots? I got some decent ones in between tripping and falling and so on. He had a bit of a tumble. I had a bit. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think you can get tons of shots. Now, whether or not they're really good or not, but you'll pull out the 100 to 400 in a big waterfall like this and you can get shot after shot after shot. You didn't copy my, did you copy my telephoto compositions there? Uh, I, I wasn't looking too much in your direction. It's total coincidence if we happen to have the same composition. Yeah, it's total coincidence that you put your 100 to 400 on seconds after I put mine on. Something like that. Well, after my fall, my, uh, my ambition to go scrambling in the rocks dropped quite severely and standing at a fair safe distance, not moving and just moving the lens around, the 100 to 400 looked really attractive to me. I mean, this sounds evil, but I really wish we got some footage of that fall. <laughs> oh my God. Like slow-mo. And I could have timed it to some music. Oh, you would, have done a, you would have done wonders with it, I'm sure. Lesson learned. Next time he disappears in the bush, Follow just him. film him. Just, yeah, keep the film running. of Simon's disastrous fall and wounded pride, we still had a brilliant day of landscape photography. And what better way to wrap things up than with an ice cold bevy. Now, I'm not sure why I'm the only one drinking though, it's, it's kind of weird, but in a few short hours, my next bevy would be morning coffee. Oh yeah. Well, it's 5.30 a.m. I have had one hour and 15 minutes sleep and I do have a face like a pulverized moussaka and I've got two problems today my first problem is my addiction to recto verso for some reason I was kind of drawn to the name I, I don't know why but uh, these are I, I've never had them before I, I got them yesterday just randomly I'm already addicted that's it I'm an addict and it's because I'll just ask it. They're called flip sides. And basically, there's something in between a Ritz cracker and a pretzel. It's something in between that. And I like both of those things. Well, this is this is basically the combo of the two. Recto verso. <laughs> so that's me screwed. That's my uh, blood pressure knackered. Uh, if you're watching Kellogg's, uh, you're not paying me to promote your product here, are you? But, um, you know, if you're watching, get in touch, that might help with the uh, blood pressure meds. And my other problem, and this is no joke now, I'm being serious, is this, this lack of sleep, this insomnia. You know, I make these videos, I say, oh, I've had 17 minutes of sleep. You might think I'm joking. I'm not, it, it's, it's for reals. So I, I haven't slept much in the last year or two <clears throat> i'm actually only 22. look at the state of my face what? <laughs> yeah i'm 22 years old what does that make me that changes everything yeah you're uh you're a sugar mommy where's my sugar <laughs> i'm a toy boy and you're a dirty old lady hey 
that. I don't mean it. But I'm seriously going to have to take some steps. I'm going to have to try and get a doctor. It's quite difficult to get a doctor here in, well, in Canada generally, but Nova Scotia really bad. I'm told three or four years before you get a doctor. Welcome to first world countries. Well, if I, if I have to wait a year and a half to get a doctor, by then I will have had maybe eight hours of sleep. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to have to deal with it because this can't continue. My immune system has taken a hit. When this happens, when I get like a two week stretch where there's hardly any sleep, I feel run down, I get like swollen glands, I get cold sores, that kind of stuff. Just general... Miserable. Horribleness. Well, and then it trickles down, right? Because then I feel it and then I deal with all this grumpy misery around me and... I'm not grumpy. What do you, what do you call this mood? <laughs> Sleep deprived. <laughs> so we're just parked outside Simon's Motel. I did promise him coffee in the morning especially seeing as he bought me this coffee this is uh, another product i'm not getting paid to mention you got the three sisters from kicking horse usually we drink the pacific pipeline but beggars can't be choosers oh, can they notice the difference. Yeah, it's, it's, it's different it does taste a bit more it's more bit, bitter more tea like if you ask me uh, so i'll wait till he gets up make him a coffee and uh, then we'll head out on the road to shoot Sunrise at a very, very special location that he's not seen before. But it's actually one of my favorite spots in all of Nova Scotia. So, come on, Simon. So Simon's just showed up for his for his coffee. How do you like it? It's wonderful. Yeah, that's that's the stuff you bought me. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. Have you have you had your breakfast yet? Uh, not yet. No, famished really. Yeah. I could make you a flake dog. Really. Yeah. Those flake dogs look good. They look delicious. Eat my wiener! Uh, Eat my wiener! Uh, ah! That Simon's a bit weird for, for liking those flake dogs, don't you think? Yeah, it's kind of weird he likes them. Yeah. Why do you feed them to me then if you think it's weird? So we've got to this uh, beautiful lake spot. I was telling you about last night with the mountains in the background. The colours are fantastic. The cloud cover is potentially spectacular. Let's just get the drones up in the air and start looking for compositions because I think this is going to be a pyrotechnic show. We'll see. sound of Simon crashing multiple times. Hey Simon, you flying your drone? Man. Oh yeah man, it's amazing. The yeah. light's fantastic. Oh, this is just amazing. On, Such a know? beautiful, serene scene. Yeah? Yeah, it's fantastic. It's beautiful. Yeah, I noticed you crashed your drone twice earlier. Twice though. I, I did put it into the bushes twice. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd go a bit higher. 
far as you I'll go left a bit. Yeah, it's better. Mm. Bit of lens flare though, eh? There is, yeah, yeah. You know how to fix that? No. No, just like any camera, right? You just get your hand and just, just cover that top part of the lens. That perfect, yeah? You like, see it? like this? Yeah, see it's better now. Can you see it? It's not working. You're not doing it right. 